Okay, everybody, so I'm going to do a relatively deep dive into the heptarchy. I'm going to talk about where it is, where it came from, and just get started. So um, the first thing you should know about the heptarchy is that it's the very first part of the Enochian system that was received. And in terms of the main parts of the system that are really workable as, as like their own thing that you would kind of regularly go back to, there's a case to be made for like Libra Loga or something like that. But really the Heptarchy and the Watchtower Angels, you know, the, the tablets and stuff like that, that are kind of like what you see here. These are the things that you would really go back to more for practical workings. And there's an exception to that, and it actually ties in pretty neatly with the Aethers. The more you get into this system, the more you realize how interconnected the different pieces are. But anyway, the main thing to understand about the Heptarchy is that it's kind of like it sounds. It's seven... It's a system that sort of parallels early the early English heptarchy, supposedly that then Arthur went on to unite, and King Arthur, that is, the English heptarchy that he went on to unite. And it's a system of seven kings as well as seven princes underneath each of them, as well as a high king, King Karmara, his name is also Marmara in heaven, but that's the, the way it's described. Uh, but that initial M is supposed to be silent, so maybe Armara, like that, right? So anyway, the whole idea is that these angels have to do with heptarchical magic, and Scott Stenwick has found uh, that they are also useful for sephirotic magic. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a review in terms of like where they all came from and how the transmission actually took place and then kind of try to show you how to how to find them if you start digging into the D archives and then I will wrap up a little bit with the places to find some of these links because a lot of people have done a lot of work to make this open source and that's more or less where I'm mostly drawing from, but I'll throw in a few other things. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, the and the angels that are part of the Heptarchy, they're made up of the three, the main players are the seven kings and the seven princes associated with them. And this is King Balagon, Bobogel, or Bobogel, etc., all the way down through there. And you notice that some of them are kind of difficult. So Benaspal or Benaspal, something like that would be how you pronounce that. And then you have seven princes here, uh, Prince, uh, Prince Baganol, Prince Bornogo, Befafes, etc., etc. So the kings are said to have sephirotic powers. So if you're getting into the Kabbalah, this would be one of the ways you would work with them. More generally, they have specific powers, and I'll get into that a little bit. I'll touch on that briefly, but all of these can be found if you actually reference the um, Heptarchica Mystica uh, or the Heptarchia Mystica or the, um, the actual D diaries. The Heptarchia Mystica is a little bit easier. So there are seven kings and seven princes. However, because it's Enochian, it does get a little bit more complicated. So let me draw back here and I'll show you kind of where these things are drawn. These seven angels are drawn from seven plus seven is 14. And then I will get into basically how all of this kind of got rearranged and how therefore you can work with the other angels that are actually underneath the kings and the princes. So the first thing I wanted to show you, and the book is John Dee's Actions with the Spirits by Christopher Whitby. Really, really invaluable resource. I believe this was a dissertation. And this only goes through the first... Yeah, basically <laughs> the first 17 months of their workings. And this is volumes one and two. So this Christopher Whitby did a lot of work trying to make this clear. And a lot of folks 
owed a big debt to him. So at any rate, the what he did is he did a lot of work just kind of organizing this, trying to show it to us and all of that. So this right here, it's hard to see, and there is actually some missing information here. Yeah, hang on. Okay, I apologize for that. So I wasn't sure. I thought the audio was getting cut off, so, but it was not. So, okay, this is a big complicated table. I'm going to break it down for you really quickly here. So this has 49 letters. Table 7 has 49 letters. Table, table 4 has 79, has 49 letters. Table 2 and Table 3, even though it looks like they're the same shape, it was delivered to John D. and Edward Kelly in this shape, this perfect cross shape. But they kept with the sevenness of this system, the septenary of this of this system, and here you can see, and so on and so forth, and see all the various letters. So there are 343 letters here, and each one of them is assigned according to this. So if you were to actually look up the number seven here, seven B, and then you were to look up seven A here, so we have B A, and this says 75, but really that's an S. Okay, that's just a typo. Right up there, seven S. So that's B A S, and then we come here to four is seven L right here, and then let me find it here E, B A S L E, D, and then F right up here. Okay, so this is just one example where you use this cross that it's initially delivered as. And then it, this whole thing gets reformed into a perfect circle. Now, a quick commentary is that this is this whole idea. It's coming. It's cross. It's a cross within the circle, and each of these with the, the but the cross is composed of squares. So we, we get back to this geometric idea of a squaring of the circle. Right. This is a big deal that you know it turns out that mathematically you have to kind of you know basically have something like the square root of pi in order to a uh, side length square root of pi in order to get the the perfect um circle shape or some some uh, version of that um of unit length that so at any rate you get the idea so you're using this to derive a bunch of angel names right but they're not just all like thrown out here what they did is it was actually converted into this nicer circular shape here, right? So I mentioned um, Basileta, and of course it's the one that I had the typo on, but you see here that angel name, B-A-S-L-E-D-F. I mistook this for um, <laughs> this letter S for an F, but if you ever look at Old English, uh, there's that's not an uncommon thing. And so I've even, I even made a point to point out here, okay, this... You know, this is, let me point it here, this is the letter S. So you might see like the Congress of the United States, the, the 18th century sp uh, spelling. The double S was always like preceded with this elongated shape that looked too much like an F. But this is an F, this is an S. Okay, so skipping ahead here. So I've already done all of this work for you. And by work for you, I mean, I repeated John Dee's work uh, laying this out. You can find this in his Tabulorum Bonorum, Angulorum Bonorum. And I will put a link to that in this thing. So you don't need to look it up or try to take notes or anything like that. Okay. But what I wanted to mention is that, okay, so this is a lot. <laughs> but what does this mean? Well, it means that there's a bunch of angels here. So within this, you can see here, I mentioned Baligon and Baganol, and you can see the next one underneath Baganol is Bornogo, okay? Now, it turns out that Baligon is the, is associated with um, Venus, and then Bornogo is associated with the sun, okay? and Bephophis with Mars, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So this is the exact same order that I have here, but it's offset a little bit here. So the way D has it is he has, he has King Baligon here, but beneath it is Bornogo, which I have here showing it's with the sun. And really that's the prince underneath King Bobogel. And Bephophis, even though he's here listed with the sun, he's actually 
the prints to Mars, and so on and so forth. So if you do this, then what you wind up finding is, if you, if you derive all of the angel names according to the way that the angels laid it out initially, is that you get these angel names. So these are the governors underneath that. Basically, you skip down to Mars to get, um, let's see, excuse me, you go down... Well, at any rate, I know, just just suffice it to say that um, if you do the derivation, this is what you get, okay? And you can actually look at the actual source documents, which is really what I recommend if you want to figure out how these are derived, okay? But there are five governors. So this is the, the king and prince of Venus, essentially the angelic king and prince of Venus. And here's the one for the sun. These are all governors. First two are king and prince, five governors, and so on and so forth. So all of this can be derived by looking at um, by looking at this initial table here. Now, in addition to these, and you'll understand the check marks in a second because I was really trying to figure something out. But these uh, right next to it are the ministers who are associated with the. Uh, king of the the king and prince of Venus. Okay, so these are all ministers. Now, ignore these bees for a second up here, right? So the ministers' actual names are Eowainel, Elbibne, Nav or Nau, Eoas Pen. That's an M right there. Gjlpsa or Sa. Oweo as etc etc. Now the reason why there's markings all over this I'll get to in a second. But the thing is is that these ministers are actually derived in the case of Venus. They're just a transposition of each of these kings' names. So instead of Baligon going from left to right here, we have Baligon going top to bottom, and so on and so forth. And I've added all of these Bs just to make it clearer, but basically Bali, Gon, Bobo, Gel. If you just take care of that, what you wind up having is you have a king, a prince, five governors, and then six ministers for a total of 13. Okay. Now, this 13 is actually important here. If you take 7 times 13, you get 91 which is, for those of you who know, this is actually the number of parts of the Earth in the Aether part of the system. Mm. <laughs> so I can spell Earth, I swear. Okay, so, and it turns out that there's six ministers for each of these, okay? Now, where are the minister names coming from? Now, in the case of Venus, it's pretty easy. In the case of some of these other ones, it was a little bit harder, and I did not figure out um, Saturn or the moon. The moon, actually, that uh, the ministers are not listed. That part is missing from the John D. Diaries. I was told that this would be a workable substitute for the moon, and these are all just basically the exact same thing I did with Venus here, except I did it with the princes. So if you scratch out this letter B up top, or if you if you were to include it, it would be Baganol, Bornogo, Bethafis, etc. But really, it would just be left to right. So it would be Oe Ular, and so on and so forth. Garf, Toe, you get the idea. So these are not necessarily intended to be perfectly pronounceable, but they are derived from this same uh, table of good angels. Now, why, you may be wondering, why is, so I'm going to go through and then just back up, but suffice it to say that Venus is, is basically king in this system. In fact, there's some debate as to whether or not, uh, it, basically the the high king associated with this is very similar and identified with more or less uh, Karmara, okay? Now, Aaron Leach makes the case that uh, based on the, basically a progression of the rulership, that now we are actually into a place where Mercury actually rules. So, but I want to get into this a little bit deeper in case you're wondering about how, you know, the way the rest of these were derived, because it was pretty neat. So it turns out that 
So let me actually let me pause here and linger on King Kermara and King Hagunel. So King Kermara, it turns out that if you were to take the ministers associated with him, I got kind of interested in like, how did this happen? I'm like, well, how do we get these these names? So it turns out if you take the king's names, uh, King Bobogel for the son, King Babalel for Mars, and so on and so forth, King Binapur, King Banaspol, King Banapsin, and King Blumeza, you get the very the second letter here. If you take the second letter of each of the king's names, you get this. And then if you take uh, and so that, and I'm like, okay, well, where does this come from? Hmm, that's interesting. And the other thing I wanted to note just really quickly is that the mercurial ministers associated with this, if you, do, if you take those names from the John D. Diaries, they're almost identical except that first letter is different, right? So you get E-S-N-G-L-E, and here you get E-S-N-G-L-E. And the, so, the same thing for the rest of those. So I was wondering, well... Why? <laughs> I want to know why. So then I did this hard work, okay? And I did the hard work so you didn't have to. Let's take an easy one here. We will focus on the Martian ones, okay? So King, uh, B-U, uh, excuse me, B-U, and the U and the V are the same, okay? So in, in Latin, you don't really make a distinction between U and V. And nowadays we do, but B V Z N I L N. Well, turns out that that's the same thing as right here B U Z N I L N. And that's the one for Mercury. Okay, so one of, one of the ministers for Mercury. So, well, where did the A come from over here? Well, it turns out that if you, instead of this letter B, you go to this A, A U Z N I L N. And the same thing here, if I, instead of saying B, E, S, etc., <laughs> and N, G, L, E, and I apologize, I did use lowercase instead of uppercase here, but instead you just go to the next letter over, and then O, E, S, N, G, L, E, okay? And then it turns out that if you use this pattern, if you go with these diagonals across, so to speak, then you actually get... Uh, a lot more of these angel names. So we here we have B B A R N F L, and it turns out that if you look at Jupiter, B B A R N F L. Okay, and if you do the same thing here, and notice that all of these markings that I've made, they don't touch Venus. Venus, you know, King Baligon and Bobogel, and and excuse me, King Baligon and Baganol, etc. They don't use that. And instead, uh, well, hang on just a second. So let me come down to the sun here. So the sun is very similar to the rest of these, except it's going in the other diagonal direction, okay? So you get Braniel, except it's coming up this way, and they actually spell it backwards. They do go from top to bottom. They start with the king, then the prince, etc. okay? So the king takes priority, all right? So now... Um, and so on and so forth. And you can do all of these as an exercise. Now, I believe, yeah, so I already got, so we have Venus here, we have the Sun, we have Mars, we have Jupiter, and Mars is the same way. I think this one, let's see, um, it's similar to this, so it has to go, anyway, you can, you can do this as an exercise at home. I don't want to spend forever on this. So, so, if you're, if you're interested in this and how to derive this, that's what you would do. So this is how the names kind of got derived. And by the way, if you know how the Saturnian names got derived um, and you have a decent write-up of this, please send it along to me. Um, I did, I thought at first, well, maybe this is kind of similar. Like if you get to um, King Baligon or Babalil, maybe Babalil, Binapur, Banapsin, Banaspal, etc. But it starts to fall apart in these two rows. So I tried various things, and I'm still, I am might like noodle around with this, but if you've done the extra work or know somebody else who has, please, please, please send that information to me. And just make it, try to, try to make it kind of clear because, you know, I need help. <laughs> so, okay. So, so this is like what you would use. So 
boiling down how to use it, it's actually pretty simple. Now you have options here, right? Basically, if you want to, you can just use the king and the prince and be done, okay? Because either the king or the prince, depending on which power you want to have, they will tell you. They're, they will they will be there for you. So King Bobo Gell, and please, I do, I do recommend um, other people's books on this, but do watch out for typos and, you know, stuff like that. So go back to the original source, either the Christopher Whitby book, which I just mentioned, or... Better yet, look at the what people have already typed up of the original diaries or of John Dee's Heptarchia Mystica, and it will tell you each of those powers that they have. Okay, so Bobo Gale is especially helpful for the dispensing of wisdom and science, etc. So I'm trying to work with him so that I can do a better job on my astrology exam because that would be considered one of the um, parts of his domain. Bornogo, um, I believe his the, is working on the alteration of metals, the corruption, the 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 changing of the corruption of nature into perfection, something like that. Um, but do just look up what he actually says, because I'm human, I'm going to make mistakes with my memory. But anyway, but if you wanted to add some extra juice to that, right? So Enochian practitioners, they're probably just gonna, most of them are going to stop stop with these two and be just fine, okay? But if you wanted to just add additional, please, please, please. And get all, instead of just two, get all 13 for any given planet working for you. Then this which this is what you would be. With the exception of the poor moon here, I do have substitutes. And the angels seem to be telling me, eh, maybe not completely right, but this would be a fine. This would be an okay substitution. So give it a shot and let me know how it goes. But at any rate, we do at least have the five governors underneath. So call in all of them. You know, why not? You got all the names, you know, just ask ask them all to help basically. So we have king, prince, five governors, six ministers, boom, uh, make your request after you've done, let's say, um, so the, te the technique would be call one and call two, making those two calls to the aethers, and then doing the conjuration, John D left one, and that's in the actual notes uh, in the links that I will add as part of this, and then make and by the way you know never assume anything on the internet is going to last forever so i do recommend downloading an offline copy of these pages just saying so you'd make the invocation that john d has make make your request um scott stenwick has actually reproduced a lot of that really nicely get rid of the old english the the early modern english spelling which was very inconsistent and he also includes a, a lot of other stuff to help you get started if you're a new magician but this is what you would do so you would make these calls to these angels. Now, I wanted to draw your attention to one other thing, okay? So, and this is a little complicated, and I'm hoping it won't take too long, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get started with it. Okay, so this is, actually, I'll, I'll save this for uh, another video. Hang on.